Okay, so if you could tell me who you are and where you're from. My name's Nick Rowe, I work at a company called Independence United, based in London, and this is the first year of Festival Annual, our independently produced book. And so explain to me a little bit about the concept of Festival Annual. Uh, Festival Annual came about, the idea came about uh, four or five years ago, and it was originally going to be Ibiza Annual. Uh, and the idea was to have a book which was a memory of the summer in Ibiza and all the different uh, clubs there. The idea of Festival Annual, first we pushed it around last year and we tried to get some sponsorship to make a book and go to all the festivals and create the book we created this year. When we didn't get the sponsorship last year, we decided this year that we had enough money to save that we'd do it ourselves as an independent venture, uh, sticking two fingers up to the recession and just trying to do this ourselves instead. This is the result. So, um, is it much harder for you to sort of launch a product like this, to, to actually sell a product like this to the festival promoters themselves? Uh, or was, it, was that never anyone you were expecting to take revenue from? That's, I uh, guess, my question. I think the festivals have been very happy because we've got, we went to 21 festivals in 96 days. And every festival that is in the book, from Glastonbury to Shambhala to the Electric Picnic, however big or small, were really happy and they said, yes, you can do this. Depending on the festival, some let us collect email addresses on site, give leaflets out to people. Some didn't want us to do it on site and only do it in the campgrounds. Glastonbury didn't want us to do it at all, but we're happy for us to go there and take photos and be in the book. It's free publicity for the festival, so I think they're very happy. Yeah. So, um, explain to me a bit more about the idea of user-generated content. How does that work? Uh, we've built this as the first user-generated book mm. on summer festivals. The idea is, uh, we made our home on MySpace this summer, and we encourage people to become our friends, to upload their photos to MySpace, and then tag us, Festival Annual, in their photos. And then over a period of June to the first weekend was Isle of White, Download, and Rock Ness. Uh, about the third week of June through to Bestival, um, at the beginning of September we received over 5,000 photos that were sent to us uh, online, or the people tagged us in online. Is there anything that you'd, you'd, you'd change for the next Festival Annual? Is there anything you wanted to improve for uh, next year? <laughs> it's a really good question. We haven't had that discussion yet. I think there are a lot of festivals that we would have loved to have included in the book, but it didn't make sense economically. The book is 312 pages, it weighs two kilograms, it's a chunky, proper coffee table book, and we didn't want to have too many chapters which were three pages or four pages or six pages. We really wanted to give a serious amount of space to the festivals this year, and it wasn't necessarily going to help us having two pages on a smaller festival somewhere. Just 21 chapters covered, which is 21 festivals. There will always be different ones that we could do. I think this year, I think if there was one which I wish was in there, it would be Sonosphere. Uh, I'm not a metal fan, but the pictures I've seen from it are amazing, and they're really passionate fans, like they were downloaded, and that would be a great one to have in there. You don't have the space, it's as simple as that. And uh, what um, would. Do you, do you have plans in the future? Is this an idea where you you, you you get stuff for free to begin with and then you start paying photographers or, or, or showing your appreciation to photographers? Absolutely. I mean, this was a very, very low budget uh, book that we put together. I think it certainly taps into the idea or the concept of 15 minutes of fame that if you have a photo and it's uploaded and we like it and it goes in the book, that's fantastic. And everyone who has a photo in the book, we've been in contact with. We showed them proofs of the photo and we said, show your friends, put it online, put it on Facebook, put it on MySpace. We've given them cheap codes for buying it for their friends. Uh, they've seen the finished product. We've done everything we can to say to people, you know, we're not just using you, we've taken your photo, we've put it in the book, here it is enjoy it and we've had a really really positive response about that we haven't had anyone who's asked to have their photo taken out or who's taken photos down or regretted it in a perfect world yes we pay people to take photos and everyone would be happy but this year we didn't have any money for that 
we were driving 11 hours to Scotland to sleep in a tent with everyone else. We weren't staying in posh hotels or anything like that. It was as low budget as it could possibly be. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I guess. Um, are you? Lo- where do you? I mean, because this is obviously a side project for independent. Uh, yeah. The company you work for. Yeah. Uh, where um, would you like to see it become a full-time thing, or is, are you happy with it being a hobby and and therefore having more, I suppose, independent control over it, more no, we, less we, commercial pressure? We, I think we'd we, we'd love to see it be a full-time job, and fingers crossed it will be. Mm. The reason that we got to make the book was we work with a number of good clients where we've made a good amount of money and we've been sensible with the money and we had enough money to put this together as an independent venture. We probably couldn't do it again in the same way because we don't have that sort of money but in a perfect world next year we'd find a couple of sponsors who would be prepared to put their name on the book. Uh, MySpace's name is on the book here, on the back cover. They did give us uh, a lot of media support which was fantastic they sent emails out they gave us banners and that was definitely very beneficial we'd love to do the same thing again next year to offset uh, some of the costs of the book otherwise you know I think we'd be hard pressed to do it or certainly to create a book which is as large and as satisfying and we never wanted to create a hundred page soft cover book and when you um, have you had any sort of um have you collected any data about who's buying the book? Is it people who know they're in the book or, or is it people who uh, are just interested in festivals? We've, we've collected as much data as we can. It seems to predominantly be people who are interested in festivals. Mm. There are areas that we can't tell, for example, Amazon, we don't know, or the book shops which are selling it now, but sales which are directly going through our website, the majority of them are with promotional codes which have come from festivals or codes that we've sent to them because uh, they're in the book or they've come from Facebook or they've come from Twitter or something like that. And we know the names of everyone who's in the book. So we've got a good idea of where we're going with this at the moment. And I think the majority of people logically are people who just love festivals and the idea of festivals. Yeah, yeah. So um, if there was more facility to sort of... um do things in more of a live scenario. Is that something you're more in, in? Will you be interested in, or are you quite happy with a, you know, a good solid book at the end of the season? Uh, what, sorry, what do you I mean? mean by in terms of, uh, I guess I'm thinking about. There's been a lot of talk, in the, especially in the last session, about festival futures. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose the ability for people to, you know, it looks like the way with, with coverage and things like that, that people yeah. are going to be able to actually upload pictures live from the festival Got it, yeah. would you ever see yourself as kind of would you be able to do anything where you be able to curate live definitely and, yeah. and, and broadcast live absolutely I think we, we think that it's got a logical place as a digital book online mm. which could be updated or it could be changed or it could fit in with a specific person who likes these festivals or went to those festivals or something like that it could become slightly more unique and individual to people online uh, it has to live in the digital world and I think the big question we've got for next year if we do it again is where our home will be and what we'll do if we're going to stay on MySpace if we're going to try something different there are a lot of opportunities one of the reasons we went to MySpace or we could have gone to Facebook is social networking is for the most part free to have an independent website a dedicated website is costly to keep that running it's an unnecessary cost that you don't have to have anymore and most people don't tend to go to unique websites very often or for more than a minute or two at a time and we didn't want that to happen we wanted it to be an ongoing project so over the summer on MySpace in the first six weeks we had a million views of photos online which meant people were coming back again and again and again that wasn't a million unique users it was people who saw a festival and then the next week we'd said new photos up and they'd come back and they kept coming back and we did that for 12 weeks 16 weeks in the summer so digital is essential and yes I think having something live can change absolutely but it's really old-fashioned and sort of wonderful to have this tangible hard cover coffee table book that you can pick up and flick through and we love that yeah. brilliant